In our previous video, we talked about the launching of 40,000 satellites by Starlink. And those were in polar orbit. Use terms like geosynchronous, geostationary, Molnia, Tundra orbits. And so I thought of making a video on it. In this video, we are gonna use this amazing Universe Sandbox Simulator to understand the various satellite orbits one by one. So keep watching. Have a look at this interactive image that I got from Wikipedia. In this image, you can clearly see that as the satellite's altitude changes, the orbital velocity of the satellite also changes. The nearer satellite moving at a faster pace, and as we move further away, the satellite speed keeps on decreasing. In terms of relative distance from the surface of Earth, they are categorized as LEO, that is low Earth orbit, MEO, that is the medium Earth orbit, and GEO, that is geostationary Earth orbit. So the first one in the list is the geostationary satellite. Have a look at these states. If I set the center city as zero, an orbital period as 23 hours and 56 minutes and 4 seconds to be precise that is equivalent with the sidereal day I get a height of 35,750 kilometers at an inclination of 0 degree with the equator. This is the geostationary satellite orbit. So why do we need a geostationary satellite in first place? That's because in this particular orbit the satellite always remains fixed at one particular point in sky making it possible for ground-based antennas to track them. And also, since they are 24 hours fixed at a place, they can provide continuous services. The second one in our list are the polar orbits. The, the polar orbit remains fixed in space as Earth operates inside the orbit. As a result, much of Earth passes under satellite in polar orbit and achieve excellent coverage of the planet that are often used for satellites that do mapping and photography. Have a look at this special case of polar orbit, also referred to as the Sun Synchronous Orbit. The Sun Synchronous Orbit crosses over the equator at approximately the same local time each day and night. This orbit allows consistent scientific observation with the angle between the Sun and the Earth's surface remaining relatively constant. The path that a satellite has to travel to stay in a sun synchronous orbit is very narrow. If a satellite is at a height of 100 kilometers, it must have an orbital inclination of 96 degrees to maintain a sun synchronous orbit. The deviation in height or inclination will take the satellite out of sun synchronous orbit. Since the drag of atmosphere and the tug of gravity between the sun and moon alter the satellite's orbit, it takes regular adjustment to maintain a satellite in sun synchronous orbits. The sun synchronous orbit is necessary for science because it keeps the angle of sunlight on the surface of earth as consistent as possible. Though the angle will change from season to season, this consistency means that scientists can compare images from same season over several years without worrying too much about extreme changes in shadows and lighting. The final type of orbit that we are going to talk about is the Molnia orbit. Have a look at the technical specification of this kind of satellites. With the eccentricity of 0.74 and inclination of 63.4 degrees with equator, these kind of satellites are used for internet needs for polar areas. They are highly eccentric, meaning, meaning they have small perigee and large apogee allowing them to have larger duration of time or polar region. Here in this simulation you can clearly see that as one satellite is moving down, another one is moving up to take its position. In this case, the land antennas need to continuously maneuver their position in order to track the satellite. Talking about the nomenclature of this kind of satellites, Molnia was the name of the rockets that were used by the Russians to launch this kind of satellites. Later on, 
all the satellites launched in this particular kind of orbit were assigned this particular name and hence the name Molnir orbit. In our next video, we are going to look at parking spots in space. Are there certain spots in space where you can park your space vehicle? Maybe Elon Musk would be looking for such spots. So it's time to say goodbye. Let's meet later.